right, let's get started. I'm excited today. So the construction of an idea. So to talk about uh, the construction of an idea, we have to first define what an idea is. That's a pretty, uh, pretty important question to ask. So what is an idea? Well, an idea is a seed, right? And the seed is simply a potential for growth. So look around the room that you're in, okay? Everywhere around you, you see things, right? Everything around you is a thought that be turned into a thing, right? There's nothing around you that was not first a thought. Somebody thought of the couch, somebody thought of the guitar, somebody thought of the wall, the chair, whatever is in your room, right? So what we're trying to do is to develop the idea, to take that seed and actually grow something out of that. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through the process. Actually, I think what we needed to do was uh, rename the, uh, the title from construction of an idea because construction sounds like it's a static thing. And in reality, an idea is an organic thing. So we're gonna quickly relabel this uh, presentation to the development of an idea. So we're gonna talk about how to let that idea grow. So there are four requirements uh, for develop uh, for the development of your idea. So we need to start thinking like a farmer because a farmer knows how to make the seed grow. So using the farming analogy, we need to start with our seed. And uh, the seed is an idea uh, or a concept. And just like seeds, seeds are small, right? And so are ideas, right? Sometimes, you know, it's just that one idea, that one little spark that creates the whole thing. So Stephen King doesn't come up with the entire story for the book before he sits down to write the book he comes up with a simple idea and then from there he's got the formula down to actually nurture that idea and cause that to grow um so i'm going to put this here a seed doesn't uh the seed doesn't need to be realistic um but it does need to be something that you believe in so there's been a lot of really impressive people over the uh, the years that have built uh, and designed and created a lot of amazing things that we say are impossible. Well, how did they make those things uh, the impossible possible? The secret really was the passion or the belief in the idea. So if you've got enough passion and belief in it, then you've got a fighting chance, but you still need to have a solid seed. So you still need to have that solid concept. You can have a uh, $500 million budget for a movie but if the story sucks, the movie's gonna suck. So the seed's gotta be strong, right? But the energy behind it needs to be there as well. So it's that kind of balancing act. Okay, so now, uh, now that we've got, I'm gonna give you an illustration real quick. Uh, excuse me, I'm gonna go over these uh, requirements. Then we're gonna actually walk through real world illustrations. And I'm gonna show you how I've applied this in my career. So uh, the second thing we have is we have planting, right? So uh, just like a seed, a seed is, a, is a like a grape seed, for example, it can give you grape juice or it can give you wine, right? It kind of depends on how you develop it, depends on the soil that you put it in. So uh, planting is simple. You need structure for that seed to grow. Uh, and in our situation, in our scenario here, we're going to say that the ground is the system that is set up to receive the water, receive and distribute the water, right? So for example, uh, this could be a production schedule. This could be film financing. It could be a record contract. It could be a book deal. But you need to take the abstract idea and now you need to put that train on some rails. You need to give it a real world plan or a system to allow it to grow. Soil is a system to allow things to grow. So the idea is this, the idea will not make itself. So you're gonna, ha uh, uh, so you're gonna have to actually take that idea and act on that idea. And the first step in acting on your idea uh, is to put the seed in the right soil, to plant that seed. Uh, then the third step we have is we have water. Water is the energy, right? Uh, so all life, as we know, need, uh, needs energy and so do the projects, right? There's various forms of energy that you can use uh, to give your plot project life. Obviously the most obvious one would be money, right? So this could be a film deal. It could be an advance for a book, could be a contract or, or wherever the money source, or you could self fund as well. Uh, the second form of energy obviously is sweat equity, right? Good old fashioned, you know, roll up your sleeves and get to work. Um, uh, sweat equity, time commitment. And then finally, you have volunteers, people that are willing to pitch in and help you, resources around you that you can use. And I'm going to show you guys how, how I've used all of this stuff. Okay, finally, uh, we have uh, sunlight. And sunlight, that's good old-fashioned TLC. And this is, I would say this is the secret sauce. It's, you can't just have the secret sauce, but this is definitely, I think, a vital part of it. And that's this. Uh, if the water is the energy from within the system, right? 
that runs through the roots, uh, then the sunlight is the energy from outside the system, right? So an idea needs a constant and a single source of energy. It needs that sun. And in, and in this case, if you're the one with the idea, you are the sun in that world. So you're the one that needs to constantly shine upon that idea. You can't count on other people. You have to be in control. So the idea here is that an idea needs an, a constant and single source uh, of energy. No one will care about your project more than you. Okay, so just recapping real quick. We've got our four requirements of, for development. We've got the seed, we've got planting, we have water, and then we have sunlight. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, a project that I've done and I'm gonna step back and show you how I've used all of these steps and then how I've developed these ideas into multiple things. So I need to step back and tell you about who I am. Uh, I am the owner of the Detroit Shop Shop. Uh, I am the world's largest producer of sound effect libraries that are used in movies, television games, video games, et cetera. Um, I am also, I'm going to skip here, uh, the um, author of the Sound Effects Bible, Location Sound Bible, and Make Some Noise. So I've done a lot of stuff uh, in my career. I would say the biggest, um, I don't know if I'd say claim to fame, fame, but certainly the thing I am the most proud of uh, has been my work with interns. And so I've run an internship program throughout my career, and uh, I, I open up my studio to kids from around the world that come and they stay with me. And uh, we go through the process of actually going out in the field. I take them out, I show them everything I know. I show them you know, how to set up the gear, how to work, how to produce. We've shot music videos. I bring them out, we do films. I take them back uh, into the studio. We do post-production. I show how to, uh, how to do editing. But the coolest thing I think is that the entire time I'm doing this with my interns is I bring in an intern that wants to be a filmmaker. And I allow that intern to follow the rest of the interns and document uh, the process that we're going through, of actually making, um, uh, you know, making the sound effect libraries. I see you're clapping, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. But at the end of the day, you know, the rocket leaves the gravity of Earth by giving back to the Earth, right? It's all that rocket fuel is just shooting all, all that energy. So I'm a huge fan of giving back, and you'll see this uh, as a common. Uh, uh, theme throughout the presentation. So uh, this is one of our interns. Uh, at the end of each week, uh, they would document and ask them um, questions and interview them and say, hey, what was the week like? And then they would edit it all together. And then we would produce a weekly video series. We've done six of these seasons. Uh, and I'm going to play a video real quick that just kind of gives you a, just a, a quick snapshot of a life uh, the life of an intern at the Detroit Shop Shop. I will tell you, it might be loud. Uh, so just if everybody could kind of get your hands on the volume knob, I'm going to go ahead and fire the video for you. So this is the internship call. This is the video that we put out to see if anybody wants to join uh, the internship program. Rock and roll. So there you go. You can see the momentum. You can see the, the idea starting to build. Now, keep in mind, all I'm doing is making a sound effects library. A sound effects library for all intents and purposes is a zip file that you download that has wave files inside. That's all I'm producing, but you can see the energy, all the things that I'm bringing to life as I'm producing this sound effects library. While I'm producing this show, not only am I giving back to the interns, but I can produce this show and then release the show which then becomes attractive to other fans and then potentially customers. 
This brings in the next level of the project and growing the seed. Now we get into the world of sponsorships. So now I've got sponsors with over a, a double, excuse me, over a dozen sponsors that are helping produce the shows. So this is, you know, Sony, Rode Microphones, Tascam, et cetera. These guys are coming in. And um, what was great is they would say, what do you want from us? And I said, I don't want any money at all. All I want you to do is provide my kids with gear. And so every year, my kids have been able, once they're finished with the internship program, I send them off with a whole suite of gear. Uh, we've given over a quarter of a million dollars worth of gear, software, and sound effects to my kids to help them getting started. Uh, if you've watched any of the Star Wars movies, uh, including the Mandalorian show and stuff, you've actually heard the work of uh, one of my interns. So uh, really, really super proud of the things that they've gone in to do. But anyway, I could guess about those kids all day. Let's continue to talk about the scene. So. Uh, another thing that we would do while we're making the libraries is I would incorporate uh, and collaborate with other local artists. So this guy in the back, uh, the good looking guy over to my left uh, is Matt Bush. He is an internationally known Lucasfilm artist. He's painted stuff for the Star Wars worlds, uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, he's done stuff for bands like Kiss and uh, Beastie Boys and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, poison, et cetera. So at any rate, I, I got a hold of him and he does these really cool like movie posters. And I said, dude, why don't you do a movie poster uh, for, you know, one of the sound effect libraries that I produce? He says, yeah, absolutely. So we did a bunch of cross promotion. He came together, drew a poster um, of uh, me and the interns. We were making a zombie sound effects library. And so he drew me as the hero, of course, a la like Chevy Chase and European Vacation. Uh, and he painted all of the interns around me as zombies. And so here is that painting here. And so that's Matt's work. So that's me in the center with uh, all the zombies around. Then from there, we brought in another artist, a local guy named Dan Phillips, who is an Emmy award winning uh, special effects makeup artist. He did work on uh, the Hobbit series, um, Oz the Great and Powerful, Real Steel, et cetera. So he came in and uh, we shot a video with him and his students. Uh, they made all of uh, our, uh, our interns into zombies and we made uh, a promotional video. So that's how we promoted the zombie uh, sound effects, uh, uh, zombie apocalypse sound effects library. Then we uh, went to another project called Heroes and Villains in which we're doing uh, superhero stuff, right? So uh, all the stuff that you would hear in like a Marvel uh, comic book or cartoon, right? So um, I'll show you the, this is Matt Bush's work here. So for, Matt joined us for the uh, promotional video. So usually what we were doing, uh, well, I'll just show you the promotional video, but he makes a special appearance in this. Uh, this was also right at the time when The Dark Knight was coming out. So if you remember uh, Christopher Nolan, we had the mask on Bane. And so there was a difficulty with people hearing Bane's character. So, and my buddy, in all fairness, my buddy is a, a Academy Award winning uh, Gary Rizzo. Uh, sound a uh, uh, sound mixer, so he mixed that movie. So I'm gently poking fun at him. So this was all done in fun. So I just gentle nod to my buddy. So here we go. This is the promotional video for Heroes and Villains.
All right. So then I'm trying to, again, every year we're trying to up it. We're trying to do a really cool library, something like raising the bar every year. So it's like, what do you do? We fought zombies, right? Now we went and saved the world from, you know, all of the supervillains. So we got nowhere to go, but we got to start facing the forces of evil. So we uh, went and started a sound effects library called Haunted FX, which was 666 sound effects to wake the dead. And for this library, we really kind of went crazy. We went all over the place to some really spooky and really crazy places to record sound effects. This is us actually at the Quincy Mine, which is a copper mine in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We are 365 feet below the surface of the earth uh, recording sound effects there. Uh, I'll let you guys watch the video series if you want to online. I don't, I don't, I don't want to spoil it, but I will tell you this. We had legitimate, creepy, spooky things happen during that series. And we actually had a lot of it was actually documented on video. So I'll let you guys have fun with that. One of the things that we did for the poster is we went to an authentic house, uh, authentic haunted house. This is the Bruce Mansion in Bruce Township, Michigan. Uh, this entire town burned down because of a massive fire. And the entire town was a big giant circle. And then in the dead center of the circle, unburned was this house. And this is the only house that survived the fire. So it's supposed to be haunted. So of course we took a picture of it and then Matt Bush then turned around uh, and then painted this poster for the, uh, for the release of the product. Now for this product, Again, every year I'm trying to I'm trying to grow that seed. I want to get this concept of these sound effects libraries to grow. So how do I promote it now? So I thought, you know, it's a haunted sound effects library. I'm a huge Disney fan, right? Because, you know, because America, that's why it's an amazing place. So uh, I'm a huge Disney fan, especially the haunted mansion. So I says, I want it to sound, I want the sound effects demo to sound like, um, like we're in the doom buggy on the ride for the Haunted Mansion. So I'm gonna, I brought in a, a special effect, uh, excuse me, a, a voiceover artist, a special friend of mine who is uh, really good at nailing creepy voices. And so I'm gonna play you just a quick clip of the uh, sound effects uh, demo for the Haunted Effects Sound Effects Library. Um, if you're alone or in the dark, just heads up, you might wanna bring in a friend. Okay, you were warned. <laughs> Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Haunted FX Sound Effects Library, a devilishly spooky collection of 666 scary sound effects to haunt your next production. So there you go. Then from there, I mean, we fought, we fought the dead, we fought the, uh, we fought the dead and the undead. We've saved the world from villains. Where do we take it from here? And obviously the only answer is to just blow everything up. So I said, all right, we've got to raise it. So we this takes us to our final uh, development of the seed. We have the, uh, what we call the action movie sound effects library. I said, guys, we got to go all out. I'm an eighties kid, man. I grew up watching Spielberg make the movies, Lucas, you know, we watched like Die Hard movies, uh, you know, all the lethal weapon series. Um, you know, so I'm a huge fan of the eighties. I said, guys, I want the, uh, this sound effects library to encapsulate everything that Stallone would hear in one of his movies. And so uh, we went out and actually I have a uh, little promo teaser promo that we put together uh, to show you some of the fun that we gathered while we were making the library. This holiday season, he'll be making a list. He'll be checking it twice. You'll be making some noise, some naughty, and some nice. Who are you expecting? Santa Claus? This Christmas, get ready for some action. The Action Movie Sound Effects Library. From Blastwave Effects, the new wave in sound effects. So, of course, in the spirit of all great action movies, we released it on Christmas, just like Lethal Weapon and all of the Die Hard films, right? 
So uh, so let's walk through the four requirements. We have the C, the, the concept was simple. I need to make a sound effects library. So what was the environment? I have a distribution deal with my sound effects company. That's how we're going to distribute it. That put it into my system. And then I surrounded it with a whole lot of energy, both internal and external. I had kids volunteering, man. They wanted to be a part of that. I had fans watching. I had sponsors on board. I had a lot of people sewing into it. And then, of course, I had me at the helm giving it the TLC and guiding it through. So this is the final product. This was uh, the action movie sound effects library. You can see on the cover, the idea of it was uh, as kids, we always grew up saying, how come they don't put all the action heroes in one movie? So apparently the idea in, in, in Hollywood was, hey, let's wait till they're in their 60s. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> which is which is kind of what happened. I'm assuming there might be a few body doubles in there at some point. But anyway, so I wanted the movie post or the, the poster for the library uh, to look like the movie poster. And so uh, again, I went in with my buddy, Dan Phillips, uh, the uh, makeup artist. And so he took a picture of us uh, all decked up in the makeup. Here's a close up. You can see all the work that he did to scar us up and make us all bloody from the battle of record. This is actually what we ended up looking like some of the days that we came in for recording. That's kind of a true story. So from there, it's like, okay, guys, we've got this really cool sound effects library. We've got all these great, remember, they're just files. That's all the people are buying. It's just a zip file. So we're trying to communicate all this awesomeness from this zip file right so we've got this image we've got all this footage of us creating this library but how do we communicate the actual sounds that are in the library i've got to make a sound effects demo so before i did the haunted effects demo where it sounded like we're in the little doom buggy at uh at disney world what is this going to be like so i brought my team together and uh, the best investment i've made in my career was uh about 15 dollars in little caesar's pizza and we all sat around and i said guys what's the cool idea how are we going to make a sound effects demo for this kind of thing. And somebody said, why don't we just make an action movie? And I was like, oh, I didn't even think of that. So we would have to do something that's gonna encapsulate everything that I love about 80s action movies. So you know what? That's exactly what we did. We went and made uh, a uh, Lethal Weapon parody about a sound effects guy who follows around a cop to record sound effects of him catching the bad guy. So how do I tie all this together? This is where the, the secret of multiplication comes in. This is where I take everything that we've done up until this point, and now we're gonna put gasoline all over it, right? So we go down to Orlando, Florida, where I was inducted into the Hall of Fame at Full Sail Studios. They've got just shy of a million square feet of studio space, sound stages, the whole nine yards, right? Um, I got a hold of my buddy, uh, Leslie Brathwaite, uh, who's actually, he's the gentleman who's playing the Dan, uh, the Murtaugh character there. Um, so he's a multi Grammy winner. This guy's got more Grammys than I got fingers and toes. He mixes for Mar uh, Pharrell and Beyonce and like all these kind of guys. So I called him up. The conversation went just like this. I said, dude, I want to make a movie. I said, uh, I'll make a deal with you. I'll put on a mullet. If you'll grow out your hair and, and a mustache. And all he said was this. I'm in. And that was it. So he came down from Atlanta, joined me in, Orla uh, in Orlando. Uh, they gave us access to their back lot. And I got to explain what their back lot is. They literally have a back lot that was designed and constructed by the exact same company that designed and constructed the Universal Studios back lot. So they've got full fledged buildings in their back lot. And I says, hey, I tell you what, I'll bring in my sponsors and all this stuff. And let's bring an opportunity where we can get all of these other Hall of Famers. Some of the guys, the AD that came in, dude, he was an AD on like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and Captain America and all this stuff. So we brought in a bunch of the other Hall of Famers and we made it a thing for the kids to participate in. And now I'm going to show you what that week looked like. So this is us making an action movie with a whole bunch of kids uh, on the back lot of the studio. Everything that you're about to see took place on school property. We never left, left, never left the property. So here we go. Speed. Scene 13, take three, marker, action. I have come here to chew bubble gum and make some noise. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Here we go, lock it up. We're rolling! Uh, well, we're doing like a short film, and uh, it's about a sound effects guy who traveled along with a police officer to record sound effects. Now I know what a TV dinner feels like. 
That's it. Beautiful work, everybody. Let's roll sound, please. Lock it up. You get the bad guy, I get the sound effects. We'll hit you with all the gags. Can somebody explain to me how somebody dies while recording sound effects? Rick and Leslie, when they're teamed up, they're funny. When they get together, it's just hilarious. Hit him again. Haven't you ever heard of police brutality? I got a shot. Yes, sir. Man, I'm about to die on a toilet. Guys like him don't die on toilets. Rain sound, chasing cars, living the dream. Team 22, take two, worker. Get back in here before they blow your head off. And in the follow car, we actually get a side angle shot. We got, once we've shot our dialogue, we can cut the sound crew. All right, everybody, you guys hold on tight. Woo! Then go back there. And I want you to get really comfortable with that speed. Action! Woo! Crashing into things. I love it. I'm getting too old for this. All right, but we're still not done. We got to kick it up a notch. So the entire time we were there, we told the kids that my sponsors were going to also give them, give one of them the exact same package, which was worth $15,000 uh, to them that my interns were getting. So the entire week we paid attention and monitored and we watched the one student that shined above the rest. And sure enough, at the end of the week, uh, we gave that student uh, um, all of the equipment donated by our sponsors. So they got over $15,000 with the gear, software and sound effects to participate. So notice, man, uh, you know, tide raises all boats, man. So, you know, here I am, I've got all of this stuff happening and I'm bringing everybody to the party so that when the project wins, everybody around, around me is winning. My sponsors are winning. My company is winning. The students are winning. The school is winning. Uh, everybody is winning as this project happens. So I'm keeping everybody in mind. So you would think that the story is over, but wait, it gets even cooler because one of my sponsors was holding a, a film festival. Not, in fact, it was this sponsor in particular. And, and it wasn't just a film festival. It was literally the world's largest short film festival. So it was going into their sixth year. I was a celebrity, uh, one of their just uh, guest judges, I guess, for the first four years. Um, 14 million participants in 90 countries. And so I contacted them and I said, hey guys, I got this crazy idea. I shot, while we were making that movie, my interns, we shot over 24 hours of behind the scenes footage. I said, guys, we can make a video series. We can promote both your, pro all the products that we used in the, in the show were all from my, my, all the microphones we used was from Rode Microphones. I said, we can showcase your microphones. It was a win. Everybody got tied in. So this is absolutely. So they allowed us to produce our own category in the world's largest short film competition. The category was called The Trailer is the Movie. The reason why we called it The Trailer is the Movie is because when we would show everybody the commercial for the sound effects library, they all would say, When's the movie coming out? We would say, that's the gag. There is no movie. The trailer is the movie. So the competition is simple. Kids around the world had to make uh, a three minute uh, short film that they had to cut and edit like it, was a, uh, like it was a commercial, like it was a trailer for a film. Had to have a beginning and a middle and an end. So it had to be a complete story, but it had to be edited and told like it was a movie trailer. So uh, that was the trailers, the movie film competition. I went to Full Sail University, got them to donate uh, $85,000 with the scholarships. We gave a $50,000 and a $35,000 scholarship away. And that brings us to the next part of our story, which was the con. This summer, short films just got shorter. Introducing the latest category from My Road Reel in association with Full Sail University. The trailer is the movie. Create a trailer that tells your two hour story in three minutes or less and include a behind the scenes for your chance to win a scholarship to Full Sail University worth $50,000. The world's largest short film competition just got larger with the trailer is the movie from My Road Reel. So not only are the sponsors being brought in, uh, but we're also helping two kids go to school. 
So now we've given away a scholarship. Uh, two scholarships were awarded uh, as a part of the film festival. On top of this, we went ahead and produced several video series, including uh, uh, one called Tail Slates, was, uh, which was a 15 episode uh, series of the behind the scenes of making off the record. Uh, we did a series called Crash uh, Course in Location Sound, which we talked about how we recorded the dialogue for the film. Uh, and then we did a film sound masterclass in which we talked about uh, both post-production and production sound. So now all of those things were used to promote the film, uh, promote my sound effects library, promote the school. And on top of that, we took it to a new website platform that I've created called Chop Chop Effects. And now we're using that as resources to teach kids around the world at various film schools. On top of that, the sound effects library that we released, we took all of the extra bonus material and made a special library uh, that we put on the website so that the kids can access that content as well. And finally, we get down to the real honey, which is this. Everybody kept asking us, when are you going to make the movie? Well, the reality is, is that we're actually in development now. I can't talk about who, but we have an attached uh, hip hop star that wants to uh, co-star with me and make the film off the record. So that's it. This, that's, this, the, that's me taking the principles of development and applying it to the seed all throughout the process. So I, I know we only got a few minutes left. Um, so I'm going to land the plane here. I only got a few more slides, but I do want to land, uh, give you guys this. Um, if you want to take a screenshot or a picture, this is probably a, a really useful slide for you. These are tips for development. These are things I kept in my mind uh, throughout this entire process. Uh, the best way to write a song is to just play. Just like I said with Stephen King, he doesn't just write, you know, get the whole idea in his head before he starts writing it, right? So you just got to pick up the guitar and start playing and start putting things together. Um, ideas are lightning in a bottle. They're really rare. So when they do happen, make sure you document it. Write it down, take a screenshot or whatever you got to do to remember what you were working on. Uh, also, every thought is valid. Uh, but only during certain stages. So it's great to be blue sky thinking and you can do whatever you want and all that stuff, but you can't change major parts of the puzzle uh, at, you know, anytime you want. So we can't get halfway through the film and then decide, you know, maybe my character is not a sound effects guy. Maybe he's a filmmaker. You know, we can't do that. The, the film has already been shot. So uh, ideas are great, but you have to do them at certain stages throughout the process. Um, everyone is creative. Um, even when they're thinking of reasons why they aren't being creative. They're just using their creativity negative, uh, negatively, right? So everybody has creativity. It's just a matter of whether they want to use it uh, negatively or positively. So when you find yourself in a situation where you're convinced everything is dire, just realize you're, you're only using your creativity negatively. You can absolutely, if somebody can walk in the room, have no idea what you're talking about, understand the situation, go, well, have you tried this? And you're like, I didn't even think of that. The reason that you didn't think of it is because you were too focused on saying that the problem can't be solved. So if you find yourself being negative, turn that frown upside down, put it into a smile, and then focus on the positive. Uh, a good idea without action instantly becomes a bad idea, right? Seeds in your hand will not grow. You've got to put it in the soil. you got to take action. Uh, and then finally, plant your seed in the spring. There is a time and a season for everything. So I didn't do all of this stuff at once. A lot of this stuff I had to wait. A lot of it was timing, contracts, getting everybody to the table. I didn't call everybody the first day. So I had to wait for the season and the time and the opportunity to present itself. So we talked about what an idea is. It's a seed, but here's the reality. It's more than just a seed. An idea is an opportunity to grow an orchard. Right, because if you look at this picture right here, this is the sound effects library. This is all I was trying to create. I was just making a sound effects library. Now that's the seed, but now look at the orchard that we created around it. We've got all of these things, all of these opportunities, these products, these events, these contests, all of this stuff that came out of that one single seed. I didn't go grab seed from something else. This is only working with the original seed that I had. So here's how it usually works my seed is simple at my, uh, my, process for these uh, developing these sound effect libraries. I made a sound effects library, did a web series around it. I brought in corporate sponsors. I did cross promotion with other artists. Uh, we ran contests and then I had a promotional video. But then I looked inside the promotional video and I found one more seed. And I took that seed and I followed the same development process. And now I got an entire a separate category. We made a short film out of it. It was an opportunity for us to give back to the school and the students. Uh, we made our own film competition category in the world's largest short film competition with 14 million people uh, participating around the world. 
Uh, we did multiple video series that are helping kids now on a different web platform. We did, we gave away multiple scholarships and now we're in the middle of producing uh, or developing a feature film around the story. So that is the development of an idea. That's me taking the seed and saying, what can I do to give this care, put this in the right environment to cause this to grow? Because at the end of the day, all I made was a zip file with wave files inside. That's all I was making. But I understood that that was a seed or a concept that could be developed. So um, uh, I know that I can't hear you, but in my heart, I'm assuming you guys are cheering really, really super loud. Um, I don't know how the videos, yay! I don't know how the videos are firing uh, for you guys, but I do have enough time to play the trailer if you guys would like to watch the trailer. Would you guys like to see? I see a couple of thumbs up. All right, we're going to watch the trailer. And then afterwards, that should land us just shy of the 345 minute mark. And then I, uh, we can uh, take some questions. So this will be the end of it. Uh, but here you go. This is off the record. He's a sound effects producer looking to score some sound effects for the action movie sound effects library. I have come here to chew bubble gum and make some noise. And I'm all out of bubble gum. He's a cop with only one week left until retirement. You're gonna have some big time sound effects producer follow you around in your job. Sound effects? That's your new partner. He wants to bag the one criminal that got away. Who's that? Kill my partner. I'll never get a chance to pay back. <laughs> he wants to record all the action. Let's go after him together. You can't take a civilian on a drug bus. You get the bad guy, I get the sound effects. I won't say anything if you won't. This is off the record. Off the record. They've each got one week to pull it off. Get back in here before they blow your head off. If they can just figure out. I'm not a cop tonight. How to get along. You're not a cop. Wait, I want to record this. Shoot him. He's already down. Stop it, you big baby. Can somebody explain to me how somebody dies while recording sound effects? That guy was half dead when we found him. This is not what I meant when I said on the cover. I think you look great. Where are you? I have no idea. On three. One, two, three. What? I want to record this. OK. Just in case something happens, how about a courtesy flush while we uh, wait for the bomb squad? No! So let's talk about what we find in the trunk of your car. Save a lot had sale on coffee cream. I had no idea that that was real cocaine. Is this what it feels like to be Charlie Sheen? Tiger blood! Hit him again. Haven't you ever heard of police brutality? The deal goes down tonight at the loading dock. You can take down the entire crime syndicate the night before your retirement. Why are you still wearing a dress? Don't judge me. You got the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be recorded by a guy boy. This summer, sound effects producer Rick Veers. Come out to Detroit. We'll get together. We'll make some noise. And multi-Grammy winner Leslie Brathwaite. How do you afford a car like this on a place with salary? I dabble a little bit in music. Are going off the record. What do you normally do in situations like this? I don't know. I've never been tied to a guy in a dress before. Really? This is like my third time. All right. So there you go. I'll stop sharing my screen here. Uh, and there we go. So that's the, uh, the end of the presentation. And thank you for that, Rick, for that incredibly inspiring and just awesome presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions for Rick, please do put those in the chat box. We actually have a question from Russ Farley who asks, did I catch Joey Morelli in there at the end of the yes, clip? Yes, you did. Good eye. Yes, Joey, Joey Morelli was our bad guy. He was Morelli, as I actually was the character's name. And Are, we are you a full sale? Uh, is it, was that from a full sale student or? 
Uh, it was from someone named Russ Fairley. Russ Fairley, okay. Yeah, and it was uh, Joey Laura, Morelli. We have Laura who asks, how do you stay focused on the journey of being creative rather than the final product? What inspires you to stay on track? Uh, honestly, what inspires me is giving back. That's the, that's the thing that makes it worth it. Because if not, I'd be like, really? Do I really need it? <laughs> but the fact that I've got a whole bunch of people around me that are having just as much fun as me, to be, that's, I don't really, I, I haven't thought of it as working this entire time. I've just been having a fun just developing these seeds. So I, I don't really look at it as work. But um, that said, every kite needs a string. So it's like, it's great for me to say, well, I'm having a good time. But if I have too much of a good time, nothing gets done. So um, really, it comes down to I have to self-impose deadlines. So um, it, it, it starts and ends with me. Like, you know, it's great. Everybody wants to be the king. They're like, yeah, I want to make all the decisions, but then you're responsible for all those decisions. So you have to, uh, you have to set parameters for yourself. And if you want to be in charge, then you have to tell yourself that you are the most disciplined person on the team. And then you have to be that person. But if you're looking at yourself going, I'm not really the most disciplined person on the team, then you're not the leader. You need to find someone that's going to be disciplined. So that's, that's really the how I stay focused. Fantastic. And actually, Russ wrote in that um, so awesome. He's actually not a full sale guy. He's just a post guy. Joey's amazing. And also we had Ashley who pointed out I saw Gary Jones in there too. Yeah, Gary Jones is in there. Yep. And uh, Larry Katz uh, played the uh, uh, the guy at the hot dog cart that got killed, got shot. Actually, he didn't get killed. He got shot. I'm not going to ruin it for the sequel. What? Awesome. We have time for a couple of more questions, so please do um, keep them coming. Um, in the meantime, let me let me ask you, uh, Rick. When you kind of started all of these um, all of these projects, kind of started sowing these seeds, and you know, really just kind of creating this nurturing, this mentoring, all these different things. Was that something that was always in the back of your mind when you were creating the business, when you were starting um, the Chop Shop Diaries? Or was it that, you know, as your business kind of grew and as your, your creative work kind of grew, you thought, you know what, I'd like to do more with this. I want to kind of keep growing this. Um, I was solving a problem that I was frustrated with. So my entire mm -hmm. career, I was in Detroit. So there's like no sound guys in Detroit. Uh, I was starting a family. So I didn't want to move to LA. I didn't want to uh, raise my kid uh, away from, uh, you know, our family and our core system. So I said, I'm going to do my life here and I'm going to set up my life in Detroit. So I've got to figure this stuff out. And so there wasn't a lot of books. There wasn't any resources. Uh, I had to, you know, figure out all this stuff on my, uh, on my own. And so out of frustration, I wrote the book. I wrote the only, it's the only book in the world. True story. It's the only book in the world on how to make sound effects. So by default, it's the best book on the subject, right? But it is, it's the only book out there. So I got, I was like, well, if nobody's going to make a book in it, then I'm going to make the book. So uh, the same thing, I'm like, well, no, if nobody's showing people how to make sound effects, I'm going to start documenting it. And uh, when I first got started, nobody would let me borrow gear. Uh, cameras back then were the big, you know, beta cams. These were $80,000 cameras. No one would let me shoot. I wanted to be a filmmaker. So when we did the internships, every season I found a video producer or a filmmaker and said, I want you to come in. You have access to all of my gear. They could borrow it 24 seven the entire time they were here. They never had to ask. I just assumed they were taking it. They had access to all of my lights, you know, grip equipment, all that stuff, all the sound gear. And I said, just produce the show that you want. And I gave them, every season is different because every season there's a different producer. Every season there's a different person directing. I acted as executive producer and as a mentor, I was helping them and showing them how to ask questions and how to set up the lights and how to shoot and get, you know, establishing shots and B-roll and all that kind of fun stuff. So I was teaching them, but at the end of the day, it's, that's your show. And so basically what I was doing is I was trying to create the environment I wish I had. I wish somebody would have given me, you know, all of this experience, time, play, you know, all it's the gear to play with and stuff to allow me to develop uh, my talents. And so um, I just got frustrated with it and said, I'll be the guy then. If no one else is going to do it, I'll plant the flag and then start, you know, start doing it at the chop shop. That's kind of the spirit. So as you can see, everything I did, I'm like, well, who else can I bring to the table and who else can we play with? And so as you can see, the snowball uh, you know, kind of evolved into this giant avalanche. And now we've got this big movement behind this film that we're developing. So, I think that's deeply inspiring. And we actually have Ashley Fortinell who asks, where is the internship located and how often, what time of year do you take on new interns? Uh, actually, we were doing the internships annually. Uh, we have suspended them at the moment because they were sound effect library uh, uh, internships, which we're not producing right now. However, um, 
I'm not going to say that we're thinking about doing something like that with these films. But at the same time, we're kind of switching hats. So instead of doing internships with the libraries, we're hoping to start producing feature films and then doing the same spirit of what we did with the Chop Shop, but with actual major uh, motion pictures. So that's where we're that's where we're headed now. Mm -hmm.